Welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. Our very special guest today is Laura Loomer. She's a friend of the President of the United States. She's an investigative reporter. Everybody knows Laura Loomer, and we're thrilled to have her with us today. Welcome, Laura. Thanks so much for having me. Let's start with what's going on in Israel. Uh, we are all very concerned here in the United States. Uh, in the past 30 hours or so, over 500 rockets have been launched out of the Gaza Strip, aimed civilian targets only. They're trying to kill as many Israelis as they possibly can, targeting civilian population centers. It's, it's a clear war crime all over the world, and the world is ignoring it. You see the video playing while we're talking, and it is horrible. What would you, Laura Loomer, recommend Israel do now? Well, you're, you're right about the fact that the world is completely ignoring it, but not only is the world ignoring it, but they're distorting the facts of uh, the situation, uh, falsely accusing Israel of perpetuating war crimes against the Palestinians, uh, falsely accusing Israel of being the violent aggressors when it's clear that it's the uh, Islamic jihadists and, and Hamas and Islamic Jihad who are firing missiles and rockets into Israel, killing innocent civilians and uh, for the sake and the purpose of uh, murdering uh, Jewish people. Uh, but look, I think that it's time for, uh, and I said this earlier today, I think it's time for Israel to uh, turn Gaza into a parking lot to be uh, to be as blunt as possible. Because, um, you know, how much longer are the Israelis going to tolerate uh, this violence? How much longer are the Israelis going to be expected uh, to live by a separate standard uh, than any other sovereign nation in the entire world? If any other nation on its borders was being attacked by Islamic terrorists or any type of aggressor uh, with missiles and rockets that were threatening the lives and endangering the lives of, um, of the residents of that country or the citizens of that country, they would respond with violent force, with military force. And so I think that's exactly what the Israelis need to do uh, because uh, the country is in jeopardy of, you know, quite frankly, being destro destroyed. They have Islamic aggressors on all, uh, all of their borders. And uh, there's talks of unification right now with these uh, Arab nations that are taking place on social media. And the big tech social media giants are amplifying these talks of Arab unification. And uh, even in the United States today, there were uh, violent protests all throughout uh, the country, especially in New York City. Uh, and Jewish people were physically assaulted and attacked on the street uh, by supporters of the Palestinians and uh, by radical Muslims who are expressing hatred towards Israel and the Jewish people. So President Trump, when he was in office, showed, in my opinion, great wisdom when he threatened and then carried through on his threat to cut off funding to the Palestinian Authority because Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the PA, would not renounce the pay for slay program. In other words, America sends the Palestinians money and they spend it on stipends to encourage their citizenry to go kill a Jew or hopefully many Jews. Unbelievably, Laura, Biden is restoring the funding, ignoring the Taylor Force Act. The money is already starting to fund the PA. And, you know, I saw this meme going around today on social media, Biden gives money to the Palestinians and Hamas sends it back to Israel. And it was a picture of a rocket that had landed in Israel that had blown up a school. Right. What? in the world is Biden thinking? Well, look, this, this, uh, this was predicted, of course, and this is what uh, you know, many expected would happen um, with a Biden administration, or as I like to call it, a third term extension of the presidency of Barack Hussein Obama, uh, the most anti-Jewish and pro-radical uh, Islam president we've ever had in United States history. Um, and it was under the Obama administration, his eight years in office with the uh, 
Joe Biden as his vice president working hand in hand to implement his anti-American, anti-Israel, anti-Jewish, anti-Western civilization policies, uh, which completely eroded our working relationship with Israel. It got so bad that the Israelis stopped sharing intelligence reports with us because they couldn't trust the fact that uh, Barack Obama's Muslim Brotherhood plans within our intelligence agencies uh, were going to you know, leak the information and compromise the national security of not only the United States, uh, but also Israel and our working relationship an intelligence relationship. The Biden administration is not making forceful statements supporting their closest ally, Israel, or is it because of who Biden has appointed to represent the United States in his government, i.e. people who just hate Israel? Joe Biden has, uh, you know, further eroded uh, our relationship with Israel by appointing a Palestinian um, radical Muslim and uh, pro BDS officials uh, to national security positions. Uh, there was a report today uh, that said that uh, Joe Biden has selected a woman by the name of Sarah Margon, who is a BDS activist, as the Assistant Secretary for Human Rights. So, uh, you know. What, what, is, what is considered human rights uh, when you're a BDS activist, right? The destruction of Israel, the eradication of the Jewish people. So human rights for radical Muslims, but no human rights for, for Jews, right? Uh, one of the officials that he appointed uh, to, and it was one of his first appointments as well, uh, you know, following, um, following his inauguration is an individual by the name of Maher Batar, uh, who is another BDS activist and served as... Um, uh, one of the advisors and leaders for uh, Students for Justice in Palestine uh, while he was a student at uh, George Washington University. Um, and Maher Batar, of course, worked under the Obama administration as well. And so now we have radical Muslim Palestinian BDS activists in some of the top positions for our national security here in the United States, not only undermining our national security by perpetuating uh, tenets of radical Islam, but also, uh, you know, perpetuating foreign policy that is extremely hostile towards uh, towards Israel, including refunding over two hundred and thirty five million dollars to a terrorist regime. No kidding, which may be used to kill a lot of Jews and is no doubt emboldened Hamas to do what they've done over the last 30 hours. So as the world watches and does absolutely nothing, neither the EU, the UN, or anybody else is stepping in, what could and what should the United States government be doing now to come to the aid of their closest ally, Israel? Well, instead of uh, perpetuating lies, it would be nice if we had an honest media that would actually, uh, you know, properly report on the situation at hand and actually report that it's, uh, you know, these Islamic radicals and Hamas and uh, Islamic Jihad that are firing rockets and missiles and, uh, you know, trying to commit lynchings of, uh, of Jews uh, in, uh, in Israel right now. Um, uh, but that's not going to happen, of course. And I think that uh, a lot of the aggression towards Israel uh, that occurs is uh, the result of blood libel in the media. Um, and we're seeing this on social media and actually on my own site, loomerd.com. Uh, my invest my team of investigative reporters and I have actually been looking at this new app called Clubhouse, which is a voice chat app. And uh, there's actually the facilitation of terrorist activity taking place inside these, these apps where Palestinians and uh, supporters of uh, of Palestinian terrorism uh, in Gaza are actually utilizing these uh, these apps to uh, coordinate in chat rooms and uh, facilitate protests and give each other tips on how they can uh, further resist um, resist uh, the Israelis and uh, carry out attacks against attacks against Jews. Laura, you're one of the leading spokespeople for the threat of big tech controlling our news narrative. And unfortunately, as you and others have pointed out, but especially you of all people, big tech is not pro-Israel, is not pro-Jewish, and is certainly enhancing the standing of the anti-Israel movement. Uh, Twitter and Facebook are also allowing for the amplification of anti-Jewish and anti-Israel tweets and uh, you know pro-Palestinian propaganda. Um, so 
uh, I think that uh, one of the first things that we need to do to address a lot of the issues in our country, not just, you know, the issue that we're seeing right now in Israel is get a hold on reigning in big tech because big tech seems to be the biggest problem facing the world right now, whether it's with the election or, uh, you know, the, uh, the aiding and abetting of terrorist activity by allowing for terrorist recruitment and propaganda, uh, the censoring uh, of information, uh, the distortion of reality. Uh, big tech is a threat to humanity. And all of these uh, social media executives are extremely uh, pro-Islam and anti-Jewish, including Mark Zuckerberg, who is Jewish, but he's a self-hating Jew. I'm not arguing with a thing you've just said. Speaking of Jews uh, being targeted, um, this one, this targeter is a member of the United States House of Representatives. I'm referring to our favorite hater of Israel who uh, attends congressional meetings every day, Rashida Tlaib. Um, a few months ago, she tweeted in recognition of International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people, um, a meme that was captioned from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Well. From the river to the sea is the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea, and that's where the country of Israel is. So in other words, she's advocating for a new country, Palestine, to replace the existing country, Israel. Why is it? I understand she's a hater. Why is it her fellow Democrats don't step up and say, Rashida, sit down and shut up, please? Well, you know, look, a lot of people love talking about this uh, this thing called white privilege, but the only privilege I really see in this country right now, and especially in Congress, is Muslim privilege. And we've seen that these jihadist individuals who are in, as I like to call it, the Hamas caucus, and, and uh, you know, I, I did, uh, in fact, coin that term several years ago when I was investigating Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib when they were running for office prior to them winning their elections, and I was warning everybody uh, about these women uh, who, you know, were most likely going to uh, get into Congress and then start perpetuating anti-American, uh, you know, pro-Sharia, um, uh, you know, values. And that's exactly what's happening. And look, I, I remember when I was in Minnesota, a joint campaign event for Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, uh, I confronted them on camera. And uh, I asked Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar why they hated Jews and whether they were gonna recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and whether they would condemn Hamas. And they refused to condemn Hamas. And when I asked Rashida Tlaib to condemn Hamas, she actually physically assaulted me. And the assault was caught on camera, if you recall. Uh, she took my cell phone and tried to hit me. And uh, well, she actually did hit me. And then I filed a lawsuit against her for $2 million in Minnesota for assault. Uh, but they're never held accountable, these women. They get away with, uh, you know, denying the Holocaust. They get away with um, with uh, refusing to condemn Hamas. They won't condemn ISIS. Ilhan Omar actually used her position to advocate for members of ISIS. Uh, they constantly bring uh, members of the Muslim Brotherhood into Congress. They form the Muslim Caucus with CARE, a de designated Islamic terrorist organization that was found to be supporting Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood. So... Uh, you know, they are jihadists and we have a full-blown jihad Hamas caucus in Congress. And unfortunately, people like Ilhan Omar serve on the Foreign Affairs Committee in Congress where she has access to classified reports. Um, and I'm sure she's probably leaking it to her counterparts in ISIS. And I say counterparts in ISIS because Ilhan Omar has open associations and ties uh, to ISIS-tied mosques. And like I said, advocated for nine members of ISIS in her district in Minneapolis, which according to the FBI statistics is the number one location for ISIS recruitment in the United States of America. Great history lesson and it's sobering because it's right now and it's getting worse. Laura, tell people where they can learn about you and where can they go to support you? Uh, well, people can go to my site, loomerd.com. Uh, you won't find me on social media because I've been banned everywhere, uh, but I'm on Parler and I'm on Gab at Laura Loomer uh, and I'm on Telegram as well at Loomerd Official, uh, but you can subscribe uh, to my website, loomerd.com uh, to get my updates. 
And I'm also excited to announce that in October, I have a book coming out called Bloomerd, How I Became the Most Banned Woman in the World. It's available for pre-order right now. And uh, when the book comes out, people can uh, read it and find out how I became uh, shut down and banned everywhere and why they can't find me on social media. And for those of you that haven't yet signed up in our ATP world, I encourage you to text the message TRUTH and send it to 88202, push send. You'll be signed up for free. You'll get all of our content in the palm of your hand on your cell phone, including Laura Loomer, absolutely free. 88202 is the number. For ATP Report and for Laura Loomer, I'm Barry Nussbaum. Thanks for joining us.